Hi, welcome to the Subversive Stitch podcast. Uh, my name is Anna Marie and this is the second episode of this podcast. I did originally think it was going to be called the Subversive Knit podcast. I've changed my mind. It's now the Subversive Stitch podcast, but it's still inspired by the same book. Like it's, I just took literally the book's name. Anyway, um, I talk a bit about that in the first episode that I made in like September and yeah, uh, I'm here back again in 2023 to kind of wrap up everything I knit in 2022. And then I think I will also talk about some of my plans for 2023 as well. Um, I will make the same disclaimer as I did in my first like podcast episode, which is that I'm not very good at like speaking coherently or, or yeah, in like a very <laughs> fluent way. I feel like I'm really demonstrating it there. Um, but I don't want to edit these because they're going to be quite long and like whatever. So I hope you can bear with me in that respect. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to go like chronologically. Uh, I think like in 2022, it was the year that I think I made like some actual garments, although even then like not jumpers um, for various reasons. Um, and unlike last year, I, I think I only knit things. I didn't do any crocheting, at least not like an actual full project. I probably did crochet like occasionally within a project but it was mostly knitting uh whereas like last year or sorry in 2021 i crocheted like a cute little cow toy for my friend um which i mean was very cute but yeah i definitely do feel like i much prefer knitting than crochet i think i did say that in my <laughs> in my first uh, episode so yeah, I think we should just begin. Um, I'm not actually sure if I did record every single thing that I made, but I think I have the majority. I made about 16 projects overall, and the ones that I made after I posted that first podcast episode, I, I think less of them are around because I made like some stuff for my friends and also was gift knitting some things. Uh, but what pictures I have, I will share so you can kind of get a sense of what they were. Some of this has been kind of like repetitive knitting, um, but not in the sense that I'm bored of it, just that like I have knit some patterns over and over again. Um, and I think I'm ready to move on from some of them now, but it's kind of interesting to do that and to get like very competent I guess with one particular pattern yeah like okay actually I also thought I might say at the beginning that like at the beginning of last year I, I was just like not in the mood for knitting maybe because I was like slightly knitted out from the past year but even then I mean I guess I did have a bit of like stressful gift knitting in December but even then I just it took me months to really properly get back into knitting um and I kind of finally did using like summery yarn and like that was sort of what push me forwards. So I would say it's from about July that I like feel like I got back into the swing of things and into the rhythm of knitting stuff. Um, but yeah, so I began by knitting some dishcloths for my friends. Um, I also knit, yeah, this is something you won't have seen from uh, the first episode because it wasn't here when I made that. So I knit my first shawl. It's using like the first um, third of the Hawthorne Tincture pattern by the Crimson Stitchery because I just wanted uh, like a one skein shawl and I, I kind of knit it for like a little um, costume um, to dress up like I was in Fiddler on the Roof for Purim and I used one skein of actually uh, something really cool happened to me, which is that I won a giveaway, which like I don't think has really ever happened to me. Um, and it was for November Woods Fibre Company Yarn, um, and uh, the person who runs that, I think her name is Alexandra, she has a YouTube channel. I don't think she's updated in a while, but she had like a podcast too. And yeah, I won. So I won this like special um, giveaway, colouring, um, and it was it's just really lovely it's like very autumnal and I like how yeah it, it really goes together and yeah I don't know it's just really nice and it was a really fun project as well as my like first shawl project which is like an aim I had for myself for knitting new things in 2022 um and I learned like the technique of making like a garter um rib and uh yeah 
so I'm happy with that. It is obviously quite small because it is only one skein, um, but that's fine. It worked for what I wanted it, and honestly, like, I think it's cute and I think it's a fine size. Um, I haven't spoken about what I'm wearing, but I guess, like, I will, because I'm wearing something I knit. Um, but the next thing I knit was these mittens that I don't have that I gave to my friend, which, again, I spoke about in my first episode oh this is like a dk weight yarn yeah and then i knit it on like 7mm needles which i presume is not the gauge for the whole thing tincture pattern because i never follow what i'm told <laughs> so the next thing i finished was this little head kerchief um it has like some lace pattern in it and it's very i think i think i made up the pattern but it was like vaguely based on like those neckerchief ones with the dropped stitches um, no, and I guess it was also vaguely based on this, because I, I sort of knew how to make a triangle shape now, so I was like, okay, I can I can do that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm happy with it. Uh, it's not, you know, it's like a linen cotton blend from Woolly Knit, and it's, you know, not been treated incredibly well. Um, <laughs> but I think it's really cute, and I think it works, and I haven't worn it for a while, because I haven't really felt like in the mood to wear like something like this um but I was like maybe I'll see what it looks like and I think it's you know I think it's cute so yeah okay so I also knit a neckerchief for my friend Mari uh and again I showed like pictures of that because I also knit one for her dog Lotta in the first episode so I won't talk about that much and out of the same yarn as this and also the neckerchief I made this which is the Star Time dressy top it's from a vintage pattern that is in a Susan Crawford Stitch in Time volume two. Um, and yeah, it has this like dropped stitch pattern or like, you can't kind of see it, but I mean, I definitely showed it much more in that first podcast episode. Um, yeah, I think it was one of the first things I knit from that Susan Crawford book. Um, which is fun and exciting. I really love vintage knitting. Like I'm really hoping to do a lot more of it in the next year. It's just, I guess like, yeah, I've been, you know, kind of walking this tight rope of like money in terms of cost, obviously, uh, for yarn. And then also in terms of like my capacity to actually wear yarn, um, which requires some kind of experimentation with, which in turn requires like some money. Um, but I mean, I have also made some progress with that and I think I have some more idea about like what my skin can cope with and like what I'm okay to wear. But yeah, so this has like a lace patterned, um, not yoke, but like, you know, um, neckline and it's quite wide. Um, and yeah, it's knit from the top down. I knit it with 3.25 uh, needles and yeah I think I I don't think I knit it to gauge on purpose like I did some maths because there wasn't my size in the book which is also I guess another thing that has stopped me from knitting more from that because some of them like quite a few of the patterns I definitely didn't realize this when I bought it but some of them only go up to a very like a smaller size um whereas some of them go up to higher sizes which is a shame I mean maybe that will change but um yeah it, it means that I need to have a particular kind of knowledge about knitting and also maths um <laughs> to try to get things to fit me which I guess you kind of already do but like to a, a larger degree if you're like trying to really like fit the pattern um so yeah but I you know I'm happy with how this turned out it is very like casual which is what I wanted like just a casual summer top to like throw on on top of you know whatever um it's cool and um yeah I, I like I do like linen I um I think you know knitting quite a lot with it like it is it definitely softens up so yeah there's that so the next thing I knit was this um look at my holes by James N Watts which was like everywhere over the summer especially um and is a theme for my own knitting after I knit this first one um and yeah, so I knit it out of King Cole, I think this colorway, sorry, like, uh, <laughs> this colorway is called Rhododendron or something like that. And then this colorway that's at the bottom is maybe like Flora, something like that. I'll leave 
correct, accurate information in the description box alongside with everything that I'm talking about, um, like all the patterns and things. And I combined it with this like mystery purple fluffy, t you know, Y2K or whatever um, yarn that I was given by my friend's mom. <laughs> um, and so I used up all of it and obviously it didn't go super far um, but I think you know I think it looks cute and I especially love like the top I think the beginning of this is really gorgeous um, yeah and I mean it's definitely a bit worse for wear because I wear it all the time and then again something I said in my early episode I have chronic fatigue I'm disabled so things I knit like I just don't have the spoons to to sort of look after things very very carefully um obviously this the yarn I use is like cotton so it's also kind of fine like it's not actually behaved that badly it's just the like you know it's it's maybe slightly more grabby than um I would like but that's fine uh grabbiness doesn't really stop me from wearing clothes so <laughs> um but yeah no I'm really happy with how it went and again I don't think I knit necessarily to gauge or maybe I did with this one. I think I was slightly off. I definitely didn't use different needles at the collar. Um, and I also did make one adjustment to the pattern where I didn't knit one of the rows in the repeat um, all the way through because I didn't like, I, li I liked how this looked better. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, did I say I, I knit it on seven mm needles? I don't think I did, but I did do that. Um, yeah, let's see what's next. Next we have something that I was knitting up uh, in the first episode, like I hadn't finished it, I hadn't put it all together, um, but I have now finished that and that is um, <laughs> the Bub Bonnet um, by Lydia Morrow. Um, I'm gonna put it on because it's really great. I'm very happy with how it came out. I've worn it, you know, I wore it specifically sort of like during Halloween, uh, but I also just wore it and it's really warming too. It's made out of Malabrigo's Rio in the colour la lavender. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's, it just really works. And uh, <laughs> I'm really happy with how it came out. Oh, I love how you can see my horns in the, in the mirror behind me. Um, yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's very warm and it was like a pretty simple pattern. Like it did take me like maybe... A little bit of time to do uh, just because um, you do have to construct it I guess and also the you know it's not knit in the round so I had to purl which I don't like um, but yeah I mean there's there's not much knitting and it doesn't take up much yarn and I learned how to do a eye cord edge um, which I hadn't done I'm, I'm not sure if I entirely did it right at the back but whatever you know it works and that is definitely also like the approach I have to knitting it's just that like they need to be nice and they need to be functional but they don't have to be perfect um and uh yeah I think you know I think it's a good like approach really especially because like it's supposed to be enjoyable you know you're not supposed to like just stress yourself out by all of it so yeah Right, I will put this back on. So the next thing is something that I, I guess maybe I shouldn't have put this back on because it is also a headpiece, but whatever, I'm not gonna put it on then. Um, this is something that you, if you watched the Halloween knitting vlog that I did, where I also did finish constructing this in it. Um, actually also, I think I did finish, or like talk about finishing this in it as well. Um, I made this, which is just like, you know, a, a headband. Um, or like an ear warming thing um and yeah it was my sort of I think it is me my, my first like color work color work thing um I based it on a pattern that is called something like northern stars it's just like a free color work pattern and then I did the maths to try and make it into like to, to like fit me um I think I knitted it on 3.5 and then needles and I knit it as like part of a sort of like very soft um cosplay like you know bounding of a character from a video game called is it a video game whatever I play it on my switch um called Spirit Farer um and the character is called Stella and she has this like big witch's hat that's like a star shape um and like because I couldn't make that I decided to make this as like a a, a homage to it homage 
homage sounds awful but um homage it also sounds bad anyway you get what i mean um yeah i'm really happy with how it came out like i just feel like it looks very like neat and when i showed this to my mom she said it looked like you know it it was professional and i was like well first of all it definitely doesn't but second of all wow that's such a compliment um yeah one thing i really find annoying is how like the top gapes um i just i don't know how to cast off with enough elasticity to like for it to be easy to put on you know so it's not stopping you from getting it over your head but in a way that means it doesn't just like gape open like that like i i hate that um if you have any tips about how not to do that then please do let me know um and i did you know i made mistakes in this pattern um uh, but i don't think you can really tell unless you're looking closely and i, I think it's nice you know um and i have plans of like someone i'd like to give that to so yeah um the next two things oh no actually first of all i knit these sorry so um i obviously like i said i love vintage knitting um and like historical knitting however you want to define those things I, I guess like what i do struggle with is that a lot of like sort of historical and vintage content is just about like wealth and like um copying the clothing and the ways of living of like rich people um obviously not always but i just feel like sometimes that's kind of shit <laughs> um and i'm you know really interested in like what working class people were wearing throughout many eras um and i think that working class people wore like beautiful clothes but just not with the same level of like wealth and and also therefore exploitation um as yeah like wealthy people so yeah i guess i was just kind of like looking for like a cute little project like that and i found this um pattern which somebody again i'll leave all the information in in the description box um it's called like work women's mitts from 1838 i think and they are just like knit as squares basically and then you just like seam them along the side and i mean i didn't do these very well <laughs> um and this was also made from yarn that like was also given to me but yeah, so I made these two little, little mittens. I could have made them a bit longer, but I didn't. It's just made the pattern, I don't know if you can kind of see. It's like made, sorry, if I'm covering my face. Um, I don't know if you can see the pattern is um, just like occasional purl bumps. Um, so you kind of like, you knit three, then you purl three, and that's how you get the sort of pattern. Um, yeah, I did thumb a bit weirdly on one of them, um, so they aren't, like, exactly perfect, but again, like, that's okay. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I really like the red colouring. It's not quite the colour that it is in real life on camera, but it's kind of similar, like, they're, they're shades of a sort of, like, darker purpley red. Um, yeah, my only problem is that this yarn is, I believe, 100% alpaca, baby alpaca. But, yeah, when I wear them after a little while, they just, like, irritate me more than I would have expected and more than, like, the mittens that I normally wear, which are made of wool. Um, so I think I might give these to somebody um, if they don't mind that they're, you know, a bit splodgy and imperfect. But, you know, I think I think they're nice. And, I mean, they're, they're definitely warm. I think the problem is that when I get hot, then I get irritated by them. I mean... They're feeling okay right now but i don't know we'll see so yeah that there's that and then after these i okay so i made like a maybe quite intense decision but i am happy that i made it and i don't believe i showed this in my first podcast episode because i made it in 2020 i think or i might have finished it just at the beginning of 2021 uh, but i made the harry styles cardigan um like i knit all of the different panels all separately except from like a couple um and then I sewed them all together and yeah I made it I'll put some pictures of it here um and I think it looked nice you know um I liked it I knit it on eight mm needles but I held uh drops Paris which is Aran yarn and I held it double and it's a cotton yarn which means that like it just took forever to dry uh, which meant that I didn't want to wear it because I didn't want to get it dirty uh, and then I'd have to wash it you know and then so it just became this like big heavy jumper that I would carry around with me and I'd barely wear 
Um, and I mean, I did, you know, I liked how it looked. I mean, I think some of the fitting, like, I didn't quite like, and I wish I had made the squares a bit smaller so I could have more of them um, and a bit more control over, like, the shape of it. And, you know, whatever. But, like, lots of those things are just to do with the fact that it was one of my first, like, big projects of knitting. And so I learned a lot from it. And I'm really grateful for what I learned from it. Main thing being don't hold Aran weight yarn double that's cotton. So yeah, so I decided to unravel it all. Because it's like, there's so much yarn here and it's like just wasted, like waiting around for me to wear it. Um, so I did that. Um, and it's also because I undid it and I was like, I sort of had the idea that I would make some um, more Look At My Holes by James N. Watts uh, with the yarn. Which I did. Um, so I made two um, in, and because it's like it was such like a colourful project, I had all of these colours. So I was also like, that's really fun. I get to make like rainbow look at my holes. I think they'll be fun. Um, so yeah, I made one for my friend where I did two of the um, two of the whole patterns. Like I mean, it's actually a, a, you do two levels and then you repeat. That is the full. So I guess I did one where I did, I used one colour for, for one pattern repeat and then I did another where I used one colour per half pattern repeat. Um, I hope that makes some amount of sense and I think they look great. I actually think the one where I used the colours for two rows, um, they maybe look slightly better but I also do really like the stripey. I think, yeah, we'll see. I also... I have some more plans so because I mean I didn't use all of the yarn because there's so much yarn um but I did use some of the colors because there weren't equal levels of color so that slightly did change what I could do which I guess is a shame because I wish I had a bit more purple but purple wasn't one of the major colors that I used so that was nice and I'm really glad um that I got to make those for my friends and they appreciated them they appreciated them I think so that's also good um okay so the next thing I knit actually <laughs> I think the next thing I knit, I didn't record this, so, but I, I did knit it in 2022. Um, but yeah, so the next thing I knit and crocheted is this little dice bag. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, it's just made out of some of the scraps I had. I think it's all cotton. Um, and yeah, I keep some dice in it. This is my lesbian dice. Um, because I briefly got very excited about play the potential to play Dungeons and Dragons, it didn't happen. But I was like, I have collected enough dice to like fill out a little bag. So here it is. I think I probably did plan to like crochet all of it, but then I couldn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> uh, it just kind of defeats me. Sometimes I think part of it is like maybe the dyslexia of like trying to read a pattern. But I think it's really cute and I'm glad I made it. And like, yeah, I just used up a couple of my scraps. So that's also good. In fact, I think I used some of the scraps from this because I didn't want it to lean too gray. And in the in the repeat for the greeny, uh, greeny white gray, there is quite a lot of gray. So yeah, I was like cutting off bits of it. And so I used a bunch of that from for this. Yeah, and then after that, I knitted this like very kind of um, I want to say like hodgy podgy, but that's not actually the word I'm looking for. Like, just very like messy scarf. Um, out of like quite a lot of different things, some of which I got from somebody, but you know didn't have enough to like make a proper project. Um, and also, uh, some of the yarn that I used in these mittens, I wanted to just use it up because I used maybe like thirty grams for this. Uh, so I was like, may as well. Um, I think I also used some of the Aran yarn that like matched the colour vibe I was going for um, from my Harry Styles project because I just thought I might as well. And I also used some Marina Skewer yarn I know, um, like Mendip Full Play. I uh, don't know if you can see, but that's it's like all kind of mixed in, but it's it, there's some there. <laughs> then I also used some pink yarn that I got. Uh, just from somebody, um, you know, as their leftovers. Um, so I use some of that. Um, and then I also use this kind of more like beigey pink brownie colour. Sorry if you can see my like really dry hands, they're suffering in the cold right now. And basically I did it because it's the softest and 
um, you know, yarn, irritation, blah blah blah. Um, so this part, the idea is that th this section of it goes around my neck, um, so it needed to be like the cool, the, the, the least irritating. Um, and yeah, and there's also like a little bit of this like, um, I think it's called like Drops Air, um, which I do have more of, uh, but I just wanted to put like a little tiny little hint of it. <laughs> you know, I feel like, can you, you know, can you tell that I love red and pink? Like I've got a pinkish fringe, wearing a pink top. I've got a pinky scarf. So yeah, um, I actually also partially made this because I really needed a scarf because my coat doesn't do up anymore. <laughs> Um, so I just need something to like keep me warm here. Um, so I was like, well, it's finally time for me to start wearing scarves, I guess. Okay, I just checked and like I actually used probably like 40 grams for these. Uh, so there was only like 10 grams or so of it to do this with, but yeah. Anyway, so the next three things that I knit, I, I don't have anymore because they were presents. So I made a hen, um, for my mum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I took like full body pictures of it but I definitely put, took a few pictures of it um finished so I will again show them here for you um this was also a bit like this where I kind of like cobbled together a bunch of stuff and I tried to kind of have a specific like color scheme but I wasn't like being really like um I don't know I wasn't being like very careful with it like it was you know fine um so I made it out of some acrylic I had that was like dark grey and light grey. I also used some um, of this like leftover drops kid silk that I had in white, which kind of was leftover slash kind of like I bought it for a project and I never used it for that project. So I was like, well, may as well use it. Um, I still have some of that left though and I do actually have plans for it now. So yeah, I also used some um, blue kid silk that I had and I also used some of this like sort of more acrylic -y, uh nylon blend of kid silky type stuff uh to to kind of supplement as well um and yeah and then I made like the crown and the wattle and the beak all purple because my mum's favorite color is purple so yeah and she did end up liking it even though I thought she might not <laughs> so you know I'm glad um yeah and there's this really cute pattern on Ravelry that I would recommend um if you are interested in checking it out <laughs> Next thing I knit were some more plic plicatum mitts. I think I think that was probably my last go of the pattern for a while. I think I've now knit it like maybe five times. One, two, three, four. Okay, at least four times. And I, I mean, I think it's a really lovely pattern. I really like the cables. And obviously now I do know it quite well. It's the same with like the look at my holes pattern where I, I just have like a bit of more fluency with it, which is nice. Um, and it is an interesting pattern. It's not boring. Um, so that's also nice. But yeah, I think I need to find like a new mitten slash mitts pattern for next year to knit. Um, and I mean, I do have some plans for it, so <laughs> we're fine. Um, yeah, so this I knit out of Drops Baby Merino. And I also used the rest of my Drops Kid Silk in blue. And also some of the acrylic-y uh, blend that I had uh, that was also blue. So it was a like, slight colour change, but I did... I, I like weighed things up so that both of them look exactly the same so that like it was just the top ridging ridging edge no ribbing it was the top e ri ribbing okay wow <laughs> sorry um that was where I got to where I had run out of the original drops kid silk that I had been using so that's where they both swapped in so they they match and also it isn't such a massive difference that you can really, really tell. And it looks kind of purposeful because it, it's on both of them and stuff like that. So I think, you know, and they were for my cousin and she really liked them. So, and I chose the baby Merino because she also has sensitive skin. So I wanted to make sure that she'd be able to wear it. And I think it's fine. It was very soft. And the last thing I knit in 2022 was a dishcloth uh, for my aunt. And I actually think it worked out really nice. I think it's very pretty. And it's called Emily's Garden Dishcloth. Dishcloth. Um, and yeah, I knit it in a yellow version of the Dropped Paris that I had left over from the, um, Harry Styles jumper, uh, that it seems like I will have for eternity, honestly. Um, but I mean, I am getting through it. I'm getting through it. Um, but I, yeah, I think it turned out really nice. Um, the last kind of dishcloth that I made at the beginning of 2022 was a colour one and like, it was fine, but I actually think that like all block colour works much better 
with dish gloss because they have two sides so colour work I don't know it doesn't quite have the same vibe I guess maybe if you do intarsia but I wasn't when I did the colour work so I don't know um obviously that's just my onion but yeah it has this nice kind of like pattern around the edges um and yeah it has like a uh, knit two together kind of yarn over kind of pattern um and it's by actually somebody whose dish gloss I really do like to knit um and who I knit a bunch of not only in 2022 but also the, the year before I got really into dish cloth knitting I guess and I definitely want to try some more I think basically what they do they're called the kitchen sink shop and they have like a theme for each year where they release one new dishcloth pattern per month and then maybe in that year they're free and then in the later years they're not free anymore so uh like this year like emily's garden i think it's about emily of new moon the novel by ella montgomery and i know there's like a darcy as in like pride and prejudice um inspired one as well so yeah and i think i do have some plans i also think like considering how nicely it worked out or in my opinion like the the fabric that i got from it um with the aaron drops Paris and I knit with like a 5mm needle I think it just really was very nice like I, I liked how it came came out basically <laughs> um so I'll definitely be doing that again if I have more slash when I have uh finished this other project that I have kind of bookmarked for some of the drops Paris leftovers so yeah that's everything that I knit last year I definitely feel like my skill level really definitely has increased even if I'm not making like jumpers like I said um and I still haven't made that many garments I do feel like yeah just my capacity to churn out like a good knitted object has uh yeah increased like I said and I just feel much more kind of competent and like fluent in some of the skills I mean I still definitely fuck it up and I also make a lot of choices that uh because I don't like being told what to do slash I'm kind of like well I don't want to use this yarn so I'm just going to do what I want which obviously sometimes doesn't work but I do feel like I'm also gaining more skills where making choices that are like against what the pattern is saying work out for me whereas before that happened much less I think <laughs> and I don't feel like as far as I can remember I don't feel like I've had any like big catastrophes, catastrophes um in the past year so you know that's nice so I think um we'll go on to talking about what I am gonna be knitting um and also what I am currently already knitting um I actually have been knitting quite a lot um I kind of had like a bit of a break I guess in I don't know I guess things kind of picked up on the 1st of January it just kind of felt like organic to start some things I am slightly overwhelmed because I do have quite a few work in progresses um but yeah I mean they're all like nice it's just about like I think it would be good to like finish one and then not start another until I finished a few more um <laughs> so yeah I'll go through them I'm gonna go through them in terms of like the time that I started them um so yeah they are kind of chronological but obviously it's a bit different when you like haven't finished stuff and I did show this in my first episode um <laughs> but I have made some slight tiny progress and that's with um a mitten a colour work mitten uh which is called the Nagu Selvu um and yeah so I've done like about five rows of the colour work pattern um yeah I mean you, you can't really see that so <laughs> um but I am really excited and uh I think they're really nice and and yeah so they are something that I kind of like wasn't really I started them in like February or something of 2022 and I just wasn't really in the mood anymore and then yeah I suddenly kind of really felt like I was in the mood I'm not sure if I will actually feel like in the mood to finish another one because obviously I'll have to go through the whole process again but honestly I I don't really mind I would wear like mismatched socks mismatched knitting knittens mitch, mismatched mittens so honestly having one like that's good enough for me I mean maybe I will make another one but I might make it in like a different way or I might make it in a different pattern anyway I've started like increasing for the thumb too so you know I'm like on my way <laughs> it is quite like easy to to do multiple rounds of um and if I didn't have some other projects I probably would have like finished it or have gotten much further um but of course I do have a bunch of other projects so yeah 
Okay, and then in terms of like casting on time, this is the next thing I cast on. This was actually supposed to be my like Hanukkah knitting because um, I wanted to make something over the eight days, um, but I mucked up and so I kind of just had to redo I, and I just couldn't like bear to like try to figure out the numbers and like go back enough so I just undid all of it and I started over again and I do feel much more confident now so I am actually glad I did that um yeah so it's this lovely lace work shawl oh yeah they they go with these diamonds uh by Marina Skewer um and the pattern is called Pear Rock Pear Rock um which I really like and it's actually partially because like the name reminds me of one of my favourite places in France which is called Paris Le Rock. So it kind of sounds the same, you know? I mean it has similar energy I guess. Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah and I'm using um, some Norwegian yarn that I bought from Fable Knitwear which I, I think I had talked about using for this other project in my last episode but this is a better project idea for it for sure um and yeah it's again I'm not knitting to gauge I'm not knitting the right needles I think I'm like maybe slightly actually at gauge but like the yarn I'm using is slightly di different than it should be um I think it's like smaller because I think the pattern is asking for like a DK-ish type weight but I'm not sure honestly yarn weights and stuff they really confuse me and they continue to confuse me even though I feel like I still know I, I know a bit more about knitting but I clearly don't know enough um <laughs> Yeah, and I was just really enjoying it. I am kind of sad that I didn't get further because I would have really liked to finish this section of, of it or at least finish like all the colour. I do have some more of the yarn. This is obviously not all of it. I'm sure I will make some progress though soon, even though I didn't get to finish it during the time frame that I wanted, which it was never going to happen really because like I had a lot of gift knitting to knit also in that time and I was also sick and then also travelling and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, the next thing is something I kind of wanted to finish before the end of this year, but it just didn't happen. And like, I, I already, you know, I gave somebody a present too. Like, it's not like this was the only present, um, but it's just quite complicated is what I found. Um, and so this, <laughs> this is the beginning of a mushroom. That's like the stalk. And then these are the bit on the underside that are slowly going to be increasing out. Um, and yeah, it's a fly agaric pattern specifically. I did pay for the pattern, but I think the person who made the pattern also has a bunch of like free versions of different mushrooms, uh, which I probably will also make because I really like mushrooms. And yeah, so this is some yarn that I also just got given. I think it is an, an alpaca yarn. It feels pretty soft. Um, and I just picked it because it's white. Um, I would have like used this, although this is almost like too white to feel like it's like natural. Um, but I don't know quite how much of it I'll use for the mittens, so I decided to just leave that as is. Whereas this was just like unclaimed. It's just much more complicated. Like I have to really concentrate on it, and I can't quite like remember the that it's not like a repeat pattern where like one line is complicated and then you have like a break line where you can just knit for like a line or something like every line is, is complicated at the moment. I'm sure it will like get easier. Um, but yeah, there's that. And I, I am, for the like cap of the mushroom, <laughs> opening this big bag of yarn, um, I'm gonna use this, which I caked up, <laughs> um, which is a like Rose Sunny, I believe, with Marina Skewer, uh, Marina Skewer four ply, I think. That's good. I do also kind of have some plans to make maybe some smaller ones in like slightly different colours. Like I have um, another green, which is maybe not here, uh, that I thought I might use. And I have this yellow. So I think I might make a green and yellow mushroom too. I think that would be fun. Um, and then also like, yeah, if I have more of this yellow, I mean more of this white, I might just make a bunch of white with like various different colours. Because that would also be fun. And that would be for me. That wouldn't be a gift. <laughs> um, so... Yeah. So the next thing I cast on was another look at my um, holes by James N. Watts. But this time, so with the versions that I made with the iron weight yarn, I used 10mm needles, which are over here. Sneak preview for what's coming up next. I thought that gauge was nice and it worked. And, you know, I think I still knit like for, for both of them, although I increased slightly differently for both of them, like for the two different people. I knit the, the smallest size um, 
with a much larger gauge and I'm going a much larger gauge even again um because I'm knitting this version which is for me now because I want a stripey one and I actually think I'm just going to keep going um and see how long it can make it so it's almost going to be kind of like a tunicky type thing potentially depending on how much yarn I have um so yeah but I'm knitting this on 12mm needles now oops <laughs> um and that's actually partially such almost mostly because I bought these for a project thinking that I would need them to get gauge but I actually got gauge with my 10mm 10 10 needles which is this project over here um so I was like I kind of just I mean I want to use them like if I bought them and I had to wait a while so I may as well make them useful so that's what that's, they are they are <laughs> um obviously this like looks like nothing at the moment and with this one i decided to just do the ribbing in one color rather than going straight in like using it to keep going and i actually think it looks better so maybe i should have done that before but it's too late i've already finished knitting those other ones and i also think that this one's going to be more messy like i don't think i'm going to sew in the ends or anything like that because there's going to be a lot of ends and I, you know but i don't care like i i kind of like it to be like a fun, cosy, you know, casual, fun item. Did I mention I wanted to be fun? <laughs> um, so yeah, and you know, I think the pattern is really easy and simple, so that's also great. And in this version, I actually have been knitting the line that I took out in the earlier versions that I made, uh, because I think it looks better um, with such large holes um, for there to be an extra row. Well, it's actually just like the row of the <laughs> the original pattern, but yeah. So yeah, well, it looks really cool like this. Um, and I'm glad to, oops, to get a use out of my 12mm needles. Okay, so the next thing is something very exciting to me. It is actually something I really wanted to cast on, you know, in December, but I just decided I couldn't because I had like gift knitting and stuff to do. Um, and then also because I was waiting for these to arrive, thinking I needed them, but then of course, when I swatched, I did not. Um, and that is, <laughs> uh, this is called the T-Rose Slip-On. And yeah, it's hard to see really, but there you go. Um, it's a vintage pattern and the pattern that I'm using, well it's based on a vintage pattern I guess I should say, the pattern I'm using has been um, sized up by somebody called Retrocord on YouTube who makes a lot of vintage knitting stuff um, and so it hasn't been tested or anything so it's free and yeah like the moment I saw like her version um, and like her knitting it I just I just had to get one myself like I had to make one um, and I did originally get actually some yarn that is in, oh where is it, here there's in my scarf just this little bit of purple because this is actually called like hot pink or something on the website it's not hot pink that's purple um so I ordered one ball of that and I also ordered it to see if like it would um be bad on my skin uh because it was in a sale so I you know it was like £1.35 or something for one ball um and yeah, but it was like such a disappointing colour. So I went with a diff different one and this is magenta and it's like actually definitely pink, which is obviously what I wanted. <laughs> um, so yeah, and you know, it's knit um, all in one aside from the sleeves. Well, I guess the sleeves are kind of, they're added on, you like knit them onto it um, and then you seam it all up. Um, and yeah, I'm slightly worried I should have, I knit the second largest size. I mean, the, the second I knit the size, the penultimate largest size, as in like 2XL or something. Um, <laughs> and I'm a bit worried that it won't fit and I should have knit the largest size. But I think, I don't know, it's, it's, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so I've got, um, this is supposed to be the front, but I actually think I'm going to put the, what is the back supposedly as the front because I prefer it. Um, but yeah, I'm on to the front portion, so I just need to knit the torso basically and then the ribbing and then I'll be done with that whole piece and then I'll knit the two sleeves, which are short sleeves, they're like these sort of like slightly puffed sleeves, um, which I, I quite like actually, um, be interested to see how they turn out for me, um, and then I'll be done, um, yeah. Unfortunately, when I went to buy like the rest of the yarn, 
it was not on sale but it was still only like 190 so that was still like fairly good um for me i have let's see one two three four so i have five balls of yarn left that each like 50 grams and 50 meters which is very useful for calculating um and i think the biggest size you needed 500 grams and i got 500 grams thinking i would knit the second largest size you know what i whatever i said earlier the penultimate largest size um so i think it should be okay uh but we'll see yeah i've just been like really enjoying knitting this and it knits very quickly and it's just like a lot of fun and it does the same kind of drop stitch pattern except from this way it actually does it slightly differently than like my oops like the top this top i made where you like yarn over one round every after every single stitch and then you drop those yarn overs the second round whereas this it, you just wrap twice when you knit and then you just knit one into the wrapped stitch um which like is fine i think i prefer this version it's a lot less finicky um and also like much quicker i think really um but you know it was interesting to try this this version so so yeah there's that i'm so excited for it to come together Oh, I just, I didn't, I didn't mention this. This is my mum's knitting. <laughs> like, I'm knitting it for my mum. Uh, I have made some progress, but not enough to, like, really show you. So, whatever, we'll just leave that there. I think that's everything that I'm sort of, like, knitting. Um, I do have, oh, should I talk about some of my plans? This is quite long, sorry, but I am, so. <laughs> Aside from all of the plans that I've already kind of talked about, um, I do have this plan to knit the shawl which is called bundle of stars i think that is by the crimson stitch stitchery um because i kind of seem to have got into shawls even though yeah but i think they're nice you know <laughs> um and i'm gonna try and knit them with this combination of yarn so this is what is this this is jameson and smith two ply jumper weight in fc51 which is this kind of like heathery purpley color gray purple but i really do quite like it um I don't think I kept my swatch that I made up. I think I undid it. Um, and then I'm also going to be using the... Well, this is also the last time I'm going to be using this. Like, I'm not buying it anymore because um, ethical stuff, which I should have really thought about, but I didn't. But now that I know, I'm not going to buy this again. Um, but this is uh, Drops Kid Silk in Moonlight, I think, is the colour. And I also am going to hopefully knit it... Uh, with some of the leftovers of my Malabrigo's Rios from this knitting for my mum, which is the Capula blouse in the same yarn that I knit mine in from last year, or two years ago, whatever. Um, but I think there should be leftovers. My idea is to knit a sort of like purpley, kind of like moonlighty colour. Um, doesn't really capture it, but yeah, I think I did keep some pictures of the swatch I made, so I could also put that in here. That's my sort of major unstarted plan. I guess one other thing that I really would like to do in 2023 is to knit some gloves. Um, and also, I guess, knit some socks. I don't know. So I actually think I might knit some gloves with this um, Regia design line, which is this kind of like reddish colour. I think you know it's time i also do feel like i've i've kind of like built a little block around like knitting socks because in 2020 i knit that was the first time i knit socks and then i knit a bunch of socks for my family for for gifts but i didn't enjoy it and also i knit with cotton yarn it just and like yeah it was like at the beginning of me learning about this stuff and I wanted to like give things to people, but I don't think that they were actually like really that useful. I do have some some that are mine, and they, I mean they work as socks, but they're just not great, you know. Um, so yeah, I guess that sort of vaguely put me off. But I would like to make some like lace socks. I think that would be nice. Um, so yeah, and I also have some more of this because it's like such a nice color. It's like this dark pinkish, pinkish purple. I think it will look so pretty. So I might make some socks out of this and some gloves out of this but we'll see and hopefully I will you know share my journey uh as we go oh yeah I also wanted to say that my cousin gave me this for my birthday <laughs> uh which is just like some felt daffodils that you that you um kind of you know cut and, and, and sew up so I'll be trying to do that hopefully um there's like you know embroidery floss in the back and also I got this as a gift which is great um, really useful for me and will hopefully make stuff quicker 
that's why you know this manages to look like it um and yeah i guess a final thing before i finally shut up is um i i guess i, I don't have any like material plans on how to like enact this yet <laughs> um because yeah one of the reasons why i don't knit jumpers is because like all of that yarn will cost a lot of money and you'll have to pay and like up front especially if you're you know if you want to get from the same dye lot and blah 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 and like i just that's a big commitment for me to make and i can't really do that so that's also why i mean i do feel like i have quite a lot of yarn now but that's partially because i've been like collecting it in like little bits which like isn't that great in terms of like long term plans for big projects or just for projects generally because i have to kind of like scrounge around and be like oh well i guess i could use this yarn that i randomly bought because it was really pretty and i was like oh, i'll make some socks with that and i didn't um <laughs> and try to fit it into another project um i mean i think that's doable but it's just like takes a bit of like finicking and planning but anyway one of my projects is i think i'm gonna try to like knit my way through this book um i bought it in 2022 because it went on sale and it's the Vintage Shetland Project by Susan Crawford. See, I just, I clearly love Susan Crawford, but like, what can I say? <laughs> I guess part of it is that like knitting, vintage knitting patterns, like the originals don't really work for me because most of them are like knit, seam, and uh, knit, and then you seam them, which means you're purling a lot. And yeah, like I said, that doesn't work for me. So yeah, but I am also maybe gonna try and teach myself like backwards or like mirror knitting um, so that I don't have to purl. And then maybe that will be like a game changer. We'll see. Um, anyway. My point is I got this uh, because it was on sale and I really love it. it. It has like patterns and it also has a bunch of like history about like Shetland knitting, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and I've read some bits of it, not loads, um, but I'm excited to read the rest of it and also to make some of the garments from it. I, you know, I definitely don't think I like all of them, um, but I, you know, I really like to start kind of knitting, knitting my way through it to some degree at least kind of the majority of it and there are some like small things like mittens and hats that I could definitely start with and also with mittens I could use like bits and blobs of yarn that I have left over so I think that's one of the projects I'll start and a lot of these I think do have the option to like knit them in the round and also to like steek them which is also something that I haven't done but I will definitely be trying but yeah I think these are really beautiful generally um I love this I really want to knit this um, and uh yeah so so hopefully that is the kind of project this is also gorgeous i think that i will be doing in the coming many years i'm sure but hopefully maybe starting in 2023 um yeah i think that is um everything i'm just surrounded by yarn and knitwear and all sorts um i'm hoping that i'll finish this like very soon so you know maybe i'll share that when i when i have i don't know yeah i hope you had a good 2022 um or like a, an okay 2022 a survivable 2022 um and i hope you knit lots of beautiful things and useful things and i also hope your 2023 is full of beauty and um care and textiles and time to knit what you love and uh yeah I actually think I was gonna read a Diana Prima poem I finished my first episode with reading a Diana Prima poem from this collection called Revolutionary Letters um and I think I'm gonna do the same this is actually like a slightly longer poem so I'm sorry about that but obviously you can just leave um <laughs> but I do think it says something um to the way that like making clothes gets in touch with how we can make the world and i guess that's one of the reasons why i love learning about textiles and i find it really fascinating and kind of like sort of a microcosm of, of a lot of things of life of life itself and time itself so this is revolutionary letter 75 you cannot write a single line without a cosmology a cosmogony laid out before all eyes there is no part of yourself you can separate out saying there is memory, there is, this is sensation, this is the work I care about, this is how I make a living. It is whole, it is a whole, it is always, it always was whole, you do not make it so. There is nothing to integrate, you are a presence, you are an appendage of the work, the work stems from, from hangs from the heaven you create. Every man, every woman carries a firmament inside and the stars in it are not the stars in the sky. 
Without imagination, there is no memory. Without imagination, there is no sensation. Without imagination, there is no will, desire. History is a living weapon in your hand, and you have imagined it. It is thus that you find out for yourself. History is the dream of what can be. It is the relation between things in a continuum of imagination. What you find out for yourself is what you select out of an infinite sea of possibility. No one can inhabit your world, yet it is not lonely. The ground of imagination is fearlessness. Discourse is videotape of a movie, of a shadow play, but the puppets are in your hand. Your counters in a multidimensional chess, which is divination and strategy. The war that matters is the war against the imagination. All other wars are subsumed in it. The ultimate famine is the starvation of the imagination. It is death, to be sure, but the undead seek to inhabit someone else's world. The ultimate claustrophobia is the syllogism. The ultimate claustrophobia is it all adds up. Nothing adds up and nothing stands in for anything else. The only war that matters is the war against imagination. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination. All other wars are subsumed in it. There is no way out of the spiritual battle. There is no way you can avoid taking sides. There is no way you can not have a poetics, no matter what you do. Plumber, baker, teacher. You do it in the consciousness of making or not making your world. You have a poetics. You step into the world like a suit of ready-made clothes. Or you etch in light. Your firmament spills into the shape of your room, the shape of the poem of your body, of your loves. A woman's life, a man's life, is an allegory. Dig it. There is no way out of the spiritual battle. The war is the war against the imagination. You can't sign up as a conscientious objector. The war of the worlds hangs here, right now, in the balance. It is a war for this world to keep it a veil of soul-making. The taste in all our mouths is the taste of our power, and it is bitter as death. Bring yourself home to yourself. Enter the garden. The guy at the gate with the flaming sword is yourself. The war is the war for the human imagination, and no one can fight it but you, and no one can fight it for you. The imagination is not only holy, it is precise. It is not only fierce, it is practical. Men die every day for the lack of it. It is vast and elegant. Intellectus means light of the mind. It is not discourse, it is not even language. The inner sun, the polis, is constellated around the sun. The fire is central. Whew. Amazing way to end it. And I'm just going to stop. Bye.